A hammer is one of the most useful tools out there. The only problem is you have to control the rebound. That is, unless you have a dead blow hammer. These tools are accurate and easy to use because this particular type absorbs the bounce. This facility makes a variety of dead blow hammers. Some are soft faced and some are ball peens, which are used by machinists. All in all, they come in handy everywhere from NASCAR racetracks to operating rooms. To first create the internal structure of the hammer, they drill through a short length of welded steel tubing with a drill press. The worker drills straight through the tube, creating a hole on both sides. This tube will become the internal head of the hammer. The head needs a handle. A worker places the tube on a jig and then positions a rod on the hole. A press forces the rod through the tube. At the next station, a worker places the internal hammer assemblage behind a pane of tinted glass to protect her eyes as she welds the head and handle together. She only welds the top of the tube so as not to alter the metal. A machine drills a set of small conical indents in the handle. Fitting a set of pins inside the mold, these indents will be crucial to the process. Because the internal handle is round, the urethane exterior could twist on it when the hammer is being used. To prevent this, a worker welds on a flat tab. The urethane will lock in place around the tab. Next, a worker crimps a metal cap on one end of the tube. This creates an open canister, which the worker partially fills with the crucial ingredient, hardened steel shot. He then crimps a cap on the open end, sealing in the shot. With the head canister done, the core of the dead blow hammer is now complete. While the basic components are simple, workers must assemble every element with precision. The mold has a set of pins inside it. A worker aligns the indents on the metal handle with these pins. The pins ensure that the internal hammer hangs in a perfectly centered position inside the mold. Workers secure the mold in a support frame before placing it on a conveyor that will take it through a preheating oven. Ball peen hammers are assembled differently. Instead of crimping a cap on, they screw the face of the hammer onto a threaded tube. The metal core of the ball peen is placed in a mold that leaves the metal face and ball exposed. After the molds go through the preheater, they arrive at the filling station. A high-speed mix head blends urethane with hardeners and catalysts and pumps the mix through a flexible hose. A worker uses the hose to fill the molds to the brim with the orange fluid. She then sends them into the oven, where they'll spend 30 minutes curing at about 300 degrees Fahrenheit. On the other side of the oven, a worker removes the molds from their frames and then releases the newly formed hammers. Thanks to a special release agent that was sprayed inside the mold, the hammers come out easily. At the finishing station, workers use a high-speed circular brush to remove the excess material or flash produced by the molding process. This is the most difficult operation in the making of dead blow hammers, and these workers are highly skilled. When molding ball peen hammers, the front and back of the head are left exposed. For performance reasons, this steel is not stainless. Workers dip the exposed steel in hot wax. The wax coating will protect the hammer from rust until it's taken off the store shelf and put to use. Soft faced ball peens and sledges are among the 20 models of dead blow hammers manufactured here. A worker attaches a label which includes all the relevant information and warnings. The labeled hammers then go in a box ready for shipping. Dead blow hammers have many applications, from food processing plants to woodworking shops to the oil industry. Some surgeons even use them to drive artificial hips into place.